So I'm opening the um, this um, planning board meeting this evening, February 3rd, um, 2020, in the Deerfield Town Hall, uh, 3 Conway Street in South Deerfield. It is 6.30. Um, I think that we had a bit of a, a scattered start because of a quorum issue, but we're all here. Maybe everybody can introduce themselves. I'm Rachel Blaine, chair this evening. Kip Kamosan. Roger Sadowski. Max. So we have four people. Um, three are absent this evening, but four is a quorum. Um, I think maybe if all are agree in agreement, we'll go to um, the ANR first. Do you mind? Um, our evening program is to. We have is that the three public hearings. Matt, yeah. you we have public hearings, um, we have some old business, and we have this A&R. We tend to the A&R, we'll be in good shape. So, tell us about this project. Tell us about this project. My name is Randy Iser. I'm from Harold Eaton Associates from Hadley. Uh, the project is on West Street. Uh, the owner is Bill Ehrman and his wife. It's very cut and dry, 100 feet of frontage. I don't know what, I can't remember what the area is, but I know it meets zoning. Everything on the plan uh, meets the zoning requirements. The main reason I'm here is because if you look at that plan, everything is in color, which is not typical. It is a land court plan, so they want their plans in a certain way. After the board signs it, I have to send it to Boston. They will draw up a different plan and it gets recorded in the Registry of Deeds in the Land Court Department, not the regular registry. So Randy, on, on here it shows um, actually an old lot line. So the original lot was this portion. Correct. So you're moving this lot line over here. So yes. You're creating just this lot and then all of this, this line will go away. Right. Okay. And the remainder will stay with the house. Yeah. Want to look at this, Rachel? Or yeah. Can you agree with it? Nice. Okay. This lot line is, mm -hmm. is going away. It's mm -hmm. the new lot lines here. So. This is 100 by whatever. Mm -hmm. Even though we endorse it, we don't really. There's a disclaimer saying, that it, you know, we're not saying it's a building law anyway. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Endorsement or approval. Anybody got any questions? So this is the, this is, it's just going from here to here. Bill I make a motion that we approve this A&R for William Ehrman on West Street. Second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, so the, the A&R is endorsed 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like I think I'm supposed to check and make sure that the fees have been paid. Start signing them, Max. We're going to have the. Uh, you want to sign them all in the same position? Yeah. Okay, we'll just well, skip the top no, lines. Really okay. Here, pass them down and just.
operating papers. <laughs> I wish that was that easy. A, B. Signing checks. Make sure the amount's good then. <laughs> Is there somebody here named Sparta? No? That was somebody who had a question that they wanted to bring before the board? No? I do. Why okay, um, the, top, the next we'll thing that we, I think we're all set. Randy, thank you so much. Thanks for coming back. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. You have that? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you drop off a check for that? Mm -hmm. you delivered it to town hall. Okay. So it's, you not, it's not, yeah. It's just received the site it was paid. Yeah. So we'll have to check on that. I can't believe he didn't do it because I told him that's what he needed to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if they took it, I don't we have to pay. They are remiss. We will check in with him about that. Um, so before I go on, uh, we have a public hearing that is um, before us on our agenda, presented to us by the offices. But I have no, I have no public notification of it. Um, I don't have any confirmation of the public hearing. Yeah, and you have a ZBA meeting on the 13th. Um, you just don't have a copy of the public notice? I don't have a, pub a public notice copy. I have for both other uh, you have public a copy of that with you? By any chance? Uh, I can see now that uh, the water is working. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> First things first, right? Yeah. Um, I thought I had anything to read. I don't know. And that is awkward. And I did ask you to put that in because I wasn't aware of this, although we did talk about it last time. I know it was in the paper. You saw it in the paper. I know. It's, it's not with the other two. That's why I, I don't have it. Yeah, one. I saw it in the paper also. I know. I just don't have a copy of it. So I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, if you saw it, it's there, the town did it. Um, I didn't see it, so that's, that's on me, but at the same time, I don't, um, I guess what we, we can do is open the public hearing Just. and read it, um, that we're going to open a public hearing pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, Monday, February 3rd, we're starting at um, 6.40 at the Town Hall in South River Lake Conway Street on a proposed zoning variance? No, no. We're, it's a site plan review. Site plan review. Site plan review. Oh, you, you can just, that's not Sorry. Else, but you can read the owner's name. So. Oh, okay. A site plan review um, by the, the the proposal is by Roger Allen. Um, it is for 6 North Street in South Deerfield. Um, and uh, your, the surveyor, Proterra Design, do you have somebody from them? Are you there? Would you want to come forward and talk to us about that? And then let us know what your plan is. So that's just in this hall here. Yeah, is that it? You guys want to look at a copy of the plan, or do you want to just wait and see theirs? No, no. 
So the zoning district is C, uh, C1. It's um, map 168, lot parcel 115. Alteration and expansion of an industrial site. More important that we hear you, you can, yeah, um, talk so us through it. My name is Jesse. I'm with Proterra Design Group. I'm here representing uh, Renaissance Builders. Um, they're in the audience here, along with the uh, representatives of the owner and uh, also the, the architect as well. Um, we're here before you for site plan um, review uh, for a proposed uh, 3,000 square foot um, building addition to 6 North Street. 3,000 square foot addition. Yep, 3,000 square foot addition. Um, the existing um, building is a 12,000 square foot uh, warehouse facility that's located um, just to the south of uh, what used to be Deerfield Valley Rehab, Refab. I guess it's a gory, uh, uh, gory fabrication now. Um, so we're just, just to the west of the railroad tracks there. Um, to the north of the vacant lot to the south of us where uh, um, just south of that I believe is a, uh, a barbecue spot. Um, so really we'll, this, this company here, um, Smith Interconnect, um, they uh, are a leading provider of electronic components and RF products. Um, you may have heard uh, the name Militech in the past. Uh, they have that technology. Um, that's one of their technology brands. So. They have a long history here in town. Um, what they're looking to do um, is expand the building, like we said, and um, it's going to be adding about uh, you know uh, four or five uh, new jobs. Um, and um, the existing site is um, existing non-conforming from the standpoint of um, it's a half-acre lot. It's mostly all developed um, in the front, and I'll show you up here. So we're that the blue square in the middle there, and you can see the building is almost the entire parcel there now. Mm -hmm. Why don't you see if you get enough lead if you want to stand by? Yeah, I can try to do that. Yeah. Not, yeah, a little bit. Well, I think you do. Keep going. Here he comes. You're messing with his stuff. Okay. Sir. Sorry about that. Um, so here we are here. Here's the existing half acre site. Um, the yellow here is the existing building. Uh, this is currently uh, paved asphalt here. Uh, there's a couple of uh, sheds to the, to the front. Um, parking now is, there's about four or five spaces along the front. And this gravel lot here to the south, uh, they currently lease. Um, lease this, it's about uh, 24,000 square feet of this, I believe they lease for uh, the majority of the parking. Um, this is kind of what it looks like in the front. Um, what they're proposing here is a, a building expansion um, to the west which is in this direction. Um, the beauty here is um, no new impervious. We're actually going to be able to take out some asphalt, replace it with roof. Um, we're only adding about four 
um, employees, which is a good thing, um, but it's not going to be a lot of traffic change here. Um, the, what we are able to do is put some compliant parking in the front. Um, we're looking to do that. Here, this is the proposal. So we're looking to put some parallel parking on the front. We'll be able to have a handi uh, handicapped parking spot. Um, again, the, the orange here is our 3,000 square foot addition, and we're pushing into the area that was all previously paved. Um, as far as um, services, um, water, sewer, electric, um, those are all pre uh, adequate for this facility now in the expansion. So we don't need to, to upgrade any of those, any of those facilities. Uh, the earth disturbance here, again, is, is in the front. It's about 11,500 square feet. Um, there is one small change to this plan, um, which I will share. The owner and architect <coughs> Need a change to one of the egress doors, and I will submit that to you now. Even more copies if you need it, but um, really the, the only change here was a change right now on, on the north side of the building. They're proposing an, an egress door, and basically that door swung around here to the front. Um, so pretty minor change, but we wanted to uh, bring that to your attention. To get a little bit more perspective here on what the proposal is. Um, and you have it in front of you there, but I think the architect's rendering here does, does some justice here to understand what's going on. Um, the existing building, sort of this yellow color here, and again, um, we're proposing this 25 by 119 square foot addition off the front, kind of that orange, orange tinge. Uh, there's no real change in use here, very minimal change in, in traffic. Um, we, um, we do not expand the utilities, so we're, we're able to get uh, the new jobs here, the expansion, without much more change to the... Uh, how, how, you're, you mean no new traffic relative to your business? Yeah, they're, they're adding about four. I'm saying not a significant increase. They're adding about four employees. So, but employee traffic only, there's... Yeah. What, what is the... What would be the... Manufacturing, or you know, what kind of traffic do you have now for the? I think it's pretty minimal. Um, Shooting and seating traffic, some foot traffic, a lot of the uh, larger freight items um, for the facility. The, uh, the materials beneath for manufacturer and warehouse. So the shipping receiving is that that pattern of traffic will stay the same. I think that occurs in the side here now. now. Outside. Just the trucks will be fuller. We expect to keep them full <laughs> okay. on the way out. Okay. So what is you, you're going before the ZBA on the 13th for also yeah. for the variance in? No general? variance, so we're, it's an existing non-conforming use and there's a provision in your zoning to, for allow, um, to allow us to go for a special permit to alter that use. So it's a change of use? 
Not a change of use, it's just altering an existing non-conforming use. Altering is existing, so that's different than changing is Correct. altering? Yep, it's an industrial business warehouse use now, it's gonna to continue to that, but an alteration or extension. Because you've use. altered the building. Yep, it requires an extension. Same, same, build, same use, same. Same use, yep. You're not seeking relief from ZBA for the amount of coverage for the property? Well, it's existing non-conforming in the way that we understand the zoning and in consultation with uh, the building department. Um, it seemed the most appropriate approach was to use this provision of the, of the bylaw, which allows for that special permit to occur under that. Um, because it's already non-conforming, they make a determination through the special permit process whether um, that's considered a, a detriment or an expansion of that use. So you're not seeking relief from the uh, town setbacks? Uh, no, in the table, um, the current setbacks are 20 feet, uh, but there is a provision in the table that the, I believe the building department, we were, we were advised by the building department. Can you, can you introduce yourself, sorry? Uh, Stephen Greenwald, Renaissance Builders. Could you come up here? Yeah, maybe, maybe be better if you come up. So in your zoning table, there's a footnote, and because the existing building to the north of us is so close to the property line, about seven feet, um, there's, uh, you can do an expansion and average um, the buildings here to determine what a reasonable setback is, and that's what we're attempting to do here. We were advised by the building inspector that that's how we should proceed. Um, and request a special permit from the zoning board. So again, we haven't been in front of them yet, and that remains to be seen, but... Um, so, so what you're proposing is approximately five parallel parking spots along the street? Four. There's four. four proposed, and the remaining, uh, by statute, we need 30 total spaces, um, although I think they use much less. They use about half of that. They have about 16 vehicles plus four transient spaces that they use for visitors. So they're only using about 20 um, with the expansion, but we have enough for 26 lease spaces here based on their agreement now. And we have four on the front that we're able to make some improvements, pave them, stripe them. Right now they're not striped. They're two speed for uh, ADA access, so we're able to make those improvements. I don't believe that we have any provisions in our zoning bylaws to allow for leased parking. Well, that's the way it is now. Um, it might be the way, but it's, you know, you know, you're before us looking to expand on something, and I understand that it's non-conforming, but you want to make it worse. And, you know, there are situations where, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have parallel parking, which they're barely the size of a legal parking spot. And then when the highway department goes along and plows, you know, there's a chance they could, they're either gonna hit the cars or bury the cars, or they're not gonna be able to plow the road because your cars are gonna be parked in the road. Uh, the cars aren't parked in the road. The cars are on well, our Well, you only have 13 feet from the building to the property line. Right. All the spaces are on property. Oh. All right. No, I, you, I might, you might fit a car, but you'll never get out of one side of it. Is what well, I'm I saying. But that's then, the way it is now. So um, no, it's not the way it is now because you're putting a, a 26 foot wide addition on the front of that building. Correct. 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 So don't tell me it's the same because it's not. Because now you can drive straight in and park there. Right, but they still have to remove. You, you still, whether or not the town plows or not, you still have to plow that front spot. So I, I guess I don't. I see. guess what Kip is trying to say is. Yeah. If that lease land property goes away, it's going to be a, a worse condition. Now at least you have some parking in the front. Maybe you don't utilize it at this given moment, but you could. And at some point in time, that lot might get developed. I see what he's trying, where he's going with this. Well, it's, no, it's, it's not just that, but they, they have parking spots there that, you know, yes, you can fit the car there. I understand if they put any shrubbery or any snow or whatever. Right. It, it'll be useless. And yeah. But also, it's, you know, they don't have parking spaces. They, they say they're leasing it, but... Yeah, they can go away tomorrow. I don't know what their term, the agreement is. But our bylaws say you have to have on-site parking. That's not on-site parking. Right. So, um, I don't know. 
um, Kevin, we have, we well, have. Well, that, if that's a concern, it's certainly something we can look at. Uh, maybe you could point me in here, but I did not see where it specifically says it has to be on site parking. But, you know, I don't have my book, but I'm. Yeah, it's back here. Sure I think it's, it's more like a common sense thing because obviously no, it's, it's, it probably is, but it doesn't make sense, you know, to depend on these property. This building's not going to go away, but that property, the agreement could disappear. Right. Well, they have a lease now. Yeah, it's through 2022. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, they have the ability to keep maintaining that. They need to do that for their their use. Um, but, you know, this, this building's, you guys have been here for 20 years, right? We have. Um, you know, it's, it's always operated like this. I understand what you're saying, um, but. Um, I think like two years ago, they did a bunch of major renovations to that building. To this building? Yes. On the interior. Yeah, yeah. on the interior. Not, interior. Yeah, the footprint didn't change. Yeah. We re retrofitted the interior yeah. to update to their current manufacturing needs. Yeah. So our concerns are parking, our concerns are the impervious surface um, is not impacted, although it's already non-conforming, so right. it's not um, because you're building on to already impervious surface. Yeah, and we looked at all sorts of different low impact development things like that, but there just isn't space between to really do anything. Um, any kind of meaningful infiltration, you need to be at least 10 feet off right. the building. Um, and there really isn't the opportunity there. Yeah. Um, I, we do have a slight decrease um, overall. There's a lot of broken pavement down here. We're kind of going to clean that up. Um, you know, we're changing from asphalt to a roof now, which is by definition cleaner. You know, this building doesn't support any kind of green roof or anything like that. Um, it's a warehouse manufacturing, so we do look at some of those things. They're just not feasible in this case. Um, so that's why we asked for the, for the waiver for strict compliance with that. And I'm just looking, I can't, I did find the, the notice for the ZBA and you're asking um, them, um, it doesn't say, just for the expansion onto the west side. Well, it, it does, but it says that, you know, you can apply for a special permit to reduce the parking. Reduce the parking. Um, so in, that's... Isn't that your business, I believe, might fall under the heading as research and development, manufacturing, mm -hmm. or something of that nature? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's something we could bring up with the, with the CDA. Like, like you said, it's a, you know, right. that special permit's pretty wide. That, yep. That, yep are asked there under that extension of a non-conforming use. If your concern is the, the least parking, we can certainly bring that up with them. Yeah, and how many square feet is the existing building? 12,000? 12, 12,000, about 12,000. And then with the, the addition is another? Uh, three, so about 15,000. 15, so how many parking spaces is that? 30, right? 30. For 500 or? 30, per, supposed to have 30. Right. Like I said, they, they lease about, what is it, 24,000 square feet, something like that, from the neighboring lot. The neighboring lot. Um, now, so as far as having enough for those, that's plenty for that, as right. far as that's concerned. Right. So that is our major concern, is the parking. One of them, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, we, not to get ourselves in pickle. I mean, can you imagine us trying to sell the Dollar General people? Well, they're going to park over there. <laughs> you can't just think, you know. Unleased um, land. I think if if we and we can um, propose this to bump it along to the ZBA too, <clears throat> in terms of changing the parking, that that's something that they have to consider. Do we consider that too? 
Well, it's definitely part of a site plan review. Site plan review, yeah. So, uh, well, that's, that's why I don't know, I don't understand how that works. If you're not going to seek a variance or something, just a special permit, how would that deal with the parking? Because we're the board that deals with that. If you don't like our decision, say if, if we should decide that you don't have adequate parking, then you could go to the ZBA. Maybe at that, maybe at that yeah, point. That's what I think. We could seek a variance there or, you know, we could ask them, but. Um. So at this given moment, the setbacks, though, from the property lines, do you meet any of them? Uh, you know, no. uh, only to the north. Only to the north? Yep. Your oh, building already is too close to the. Yeah. Yep. Both so the I'm sure side. there's a tree there, where it used to be, on the side of the Isn't there a loading dock on the back of that building too, and that's not even on your property? No. But you don't use that loading dock? Um, I believe it's shared with, with Corey yeah. here, I'm not sure. They, don't, I mean, they have an agreement with him on the east side. Mr. On the east side. Yeah. That's correct. So right now you, you don't meet the setback from no. North right. Street? Well, the current building is Yeah, the current, current building. building. Yeah, current yeah that's building. what I'm asking. Yeah, the current building. The current building does. From North Street. Right. Yes. From, from North. Right. Right. Not, not from these other sides. Right. Yeah. So, in that sense, you're making it more non conforming. Well, right. Again, in, in the table, we're allowed, based on our reading and discussion with the building inspector, we're allowed to expand this to an average of the, the buildings next to us. So, we don't think we need a variance for that. Uh, that may, you know, we got to see what the ZBA says, but that's, we're not, you know, we're not saying we're not meeting this year. When you say the building inspector, who you've been dealing with, I know we're in the Bob. process of yeah. changing. The new. Bob. Bob. Bob, okay, I didn't. Yeah. That was his read of the table. Yeah, I'm okay. just asking, I didn't, because I didn't know who they were dealing right. with. I yep. went to him and asked him, you know, here's what the, the Smiths would like to do. They want to stay in town. Mm -hmm. they, want, they need to expand for their business and grow. I'm sure the mm -hmm. town wants to keep them here. Yeah, the town yeah. wants to keep them here. Right. How, how do we, how do we it proceed? Mm -hmm. and proceeding as we were advised by him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was to seek the route yep. mm -hmm. with the zoning and also go to apply for both planning and the zoning Variances. hearings at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. Too bad he's not here tonight. Yeah, and, and he, he's got no comment, which is discouraging. On he, on his on right, the, he did, the review I saw sheet, that he, saw, he made no comment, and I think um, <laughs> no he comment on concerns at this time. So you should have some comment. I yes, think. no, I agree. I think that if he's already weighed in with you, which is um, this is Bob Walden, our um, building inspector, and I think. We're going to need to consult with him before we go much further. Um, and I think that we should, um, some of us, and I'd be willing to be there, be at the zoning board just to hear this the further through to the next step so that um, we have a clearer vision of what it is that these, these things often fall in between our two boards. Um, and if... Um, we were looking down the road in December at this. More clearly, we might have made a joint hearing just so that we could address these concerns together. But I think at this point for us to continue the hearing until potentially the 24th, if that's a date that we could. Max, are you free on the 24th? Any chance? What day is that? What day it's is a Monday. It? That's a Monday. It's a Monday. It'd I mean, be, it'd be, it would be an equal. Equal scary thing, right? Yeah. Equal chance. Well, uh, John will be back by then, and and Mary and Paul, whomever. But I think, and that doesn't necessarily in place of our March meeting. It's just in addition to our March meeting to clean up some of these things and continue them. And I, I that would be a week after you've met with the um, ZBA, and it would give us a chance to uh, talk to Mr. Um, Wal Waldron. That it? Walden. 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 Um, about his concerns or non-concerns, as it turns out, maybe, but what his take is, what his read is on the... the which one? Continue. That's what I'm saying. So we continue to the 24th. No, I'm talking about the meeting at 7 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So that would be my, that's my, anybody else thinking? No, I would love I to. Think, I think so. I, okay, so if somebody would like to make a motion to continue this meeting to the 24th. I'll make that motion to continue it to um, tentatively, or we should have it to a date. You want to the, say 24th. The, 24th? I'm, I'm, the 24th. I'm putting a February. stake down the 24th okay. of February. Um, uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So, if I have continuing uh, papers to sign to to the twenty fourth, uh, just just, um, just to reiterate, your main concern is the parking on the on the lease lot and the and the the, the continuation of a non conforming lot to create something that is uh, right equally yeah. complex, less conforming. Because from we want from this board's point of view. There's a couple. There's several things. One is the lack of parking, uh, the lack of uh, you know distance from the building to the property line, the entire size of the building on the lot, all of those are non-conforming. And I understand that there are some provisions that it can be looked at in different light, but you know. Uh, but I guess those are more zoning concerns. I, correct. I would say I agree with you. Parking. That That's in our purview. purview. Mm -hmm. so that, and they're not unrelated, that. but we want to. I think this is a good thing for us to actually check with Bob Walden. Okay. Before we go yeah. too much further, um, some of us will be at the, the 13th, the hearing on the 13th, to mm -hmm. see this further down the road, hear the concerns there, um, and then we'll see you again here on okay. the 24th. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And I've got to need you to sign this. The continuation. Seven. Seven. Seven works better for us, doesn't it? Yes. Seven right. o'clock. Thank you for that. So that will be uh, February 24th. Do you want me to sign or do you want the applicant to sign? Probably better if the applicant is the applicant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, the 24th. The 24th. And um, then we have, um, Chris, we're going to, we didn't have a quorum at six o'clock. For the, um, we're going to open the public hearing um, for the to review the floodplain bylaw, but we're going to continue that as well. We didn't have a quorum at six when that was, so um, that's going to be my call right now is to continue that. Yes, but I, could you stick around for the? That would be great. Um, so let me uh, at this point open um, another public hearing. Um, public hearing pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, um, this evening, Monday, February 15th, uh, fi third, excuse me, uh, 2020 at 710, um, at Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, um, opening a pub we are opening a public hearing on proposed amendments to the floodplain, thank you, uh, district zoning bylaw. The proposed amendments update the floodplain regulations and clarify the uses that are permitted, prohibited, and permitted by special permit in the floodplain district. The full text of the floodplain bylaw can be found on the uh, town website. Um, and paper copies can be attained, um, obtained, excuse me, at Deerfield Town Clerk's Office here during normal business hours. Um, however, it's my intention at this point to, because we're, we missed that six o'clock time and there may be people who have already left um, for that, we're going to continue that public hearing as well um, and we will continue it till, until the 24th as well. Um, to the meeting that date, um, February 24th at seven o'clock, beginning at seven o'clock. Um, can I get a motion to continue that meeting? Sure. I make a motion to continue that public hearing until the 24th of February at seven o'clock. Yes. Second? I'll second it. Thank you, Paul. And all in favor? Aye. Thanks, Roger. All right, so that's 400. We'll continue the floodplain um, district zoning bylaw, um, but there are paper copies available. It, um, it's worth a read, and I will work on that as we go on. Uh, we have a third public hearing this evening uh, that we're going to open. Um, this public hearing 
Um, again, um, pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, on tonight, um, Monday, February 3rd, 2020, here at the Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, um, proposed bylaws, zoning bylaws, proposed by Gogritz LLC. The text of said document can be inspected at the town hall has been here. The proposal would consolidate now separate bylaws for medical and non-medical marijuana operations, authorize product manufacturing in the RA district on parcels of five acres or more when co-located with a licensed cultivation operator and make certain other clarifying amendments. So, Attorney Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're on. Oh, thank you, yeah. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Richard Evans. I'm counsel for uh, GoGriz. Uh, LLC, who is the proponent of the uh, amendment before you tonight. Uh, as you know, I have also been here many times representing uh, uh, Sons Mass Inc. Um, but I, I, every time I've appeared, I've represented one or the other, I think, but, but not myself. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to be joined tonight by uh, representatives from the companies who are, the Gogiz, Gogiz is the owner of the land at 198 Mill Village Road that used to be uh, Pioneer Gardens, that, that greenhouse operation of theirs. And, uh, uh, and, and Sons Mass is their tenant, as you know, who obtained a special permit, um, and they will be operating the facility. So I, I, we're here tonight on behalf of Gogris, the landowner, because it's the landowner who has standing to request a change in zoning under Section 5 of 30A. I'm joined tonight by a number of representatives from the company. Uh, this is my, my colleague, Mike Cutler, closest to me. Uh, Dr. Uh, Noel Palmer, who is the chief scientist for uh, Harvest Inc., the company, the, the parent company of the Sons Band. Uh, John um, Lathrop, who is a security. He's doing handling security at this site. Uh, Martin, Martin Coronado is the cultivation director. Uh, at the end is my colleague, Don Dubenbohr, from know, uh, from Williamstown. Uh, we also have Blake Gilmore, um, who uh, works for Harvest. He's a Deerfield guy. And uh, next to him is Peter Davies. And then uh, to Blake's left, Allie Kirkpatrick, who you'll hear from later, who is the uh, Director of Governmental Affairs for the company. I'd like to take a minute, if I could, um, Madam Chair, to give some background and context because what we're proposing here is something you probably don't see very often, a rather long, uh, well, five or six pages um, uh, proposal to amend the zoning. And, and uh, it's, it's a slightly uh, odd situation that someone would come and request a, a, a zoning change to that extent. And I'd like to explain why it is we're doing that now so that you and, and other Deerfield residents who I hope will be watching this will have a better understanding of what brings us here tonight and what this is really all about. So to, by way of background, let me observe that uh, we can go back to 2012, which was the beginning of, of major changes in marijuana law in the state of Massachusetts. That's when the voters of the, the state passed the decriminalization initiative, which uh, Deerfield itself passed, uh, approved by 66%. Uh, the gist of that provision was that people wouldn't get arrested for having small quantities of pot. It really came down to that. And um, that it did not require any adjustments in local law, to my knowledge. Uh, in fact, the only impact on the town was probably that the police had less work to do. And, um, and, um, and citizens, of course, more importantly, were protected from the prospect of being arrested for small amounts of marijuana. So in 2012, as you know, there was another initiative on the statewide ballot. Uh, it was for uh, medical marijuana. Uh, Deerfield voters supported that as well by a vote of 59%. Um, and after the uh, 2012 medical marijuana initiative, uh, this board 
labored to develop a set of, of bylaws, which became section 4650 in, in, your, in your current bylaws. It was a medical marijuana bylaw, uh, which among other things uh, named the select board as the special permit granting authority. And it was, it was a pursuant to that bylaw, the medical marijuana bylaw, that Sons Mass came in a few years ago and requested a special permit uh, for medical marijuana operations, which was granted. Um, now we go to 2016, when the, the Massachusetts voters approved the full adult legalization uh, initiative by a significant margin, and Deerfield approved that one by 55% which was about state, statewide, actually. And, um, and so this board, uh, as you call, once again went back to the, uh, uh, to the drawing boards and, and developed rather assiduously, I, as I was there and I observed the process, uh, developed a uh, non-medical or adult or so-called recreational marijuana bylaw, which, took, which became uh, section 4660 in, the, uh, in your in your zoning bylaws in Deerfield. And it named the planning board, of course, as a special permit granting authority. Uh, and, and since that time, I know the board has entertained a number of applications from various entities for, for uh, approval of for special permits for, special, for uh, marijuana operations. Well, as you also recall, uh, you've seen a lot of me. I was here at many of the hearings for Sun Mass and Go Grizz and, and some of the other places and, 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 and and, and watched and observed you develop the bylaw. So uh, one thing I've observed is that uh, um, is, is the, that um, there are a number of things that the, 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 this board observed and uh, what, what you, this board went through in trying to adapt to uh, significant changes in the law that legalization represents and to get a grasp on just how Deerfield should control the use of land to accommodate this new industry, but to control the use of land in a way that pr properly protects the public health and the public safety and the character of the community, which is, of course, the point of zoning in the first place. So one of the things I've observed is that, uh, and I think most people agree with this, is that it really, in the long run, doesn't make a lot of sense to have two sections about marijuana in the bylaws. I mean, it's the same plant. There's no, there's no biological or uh, um, uh, uh, other scientific distinction between medical marijuana and non-medical marijuana. It's the same plant. And so it really doesn't make a lot of sense to have two sets of laws for them. Um, similarly, it. Uh, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to have the special permit granting authority be to be the select board in one and the planning board in the other. Uh, there were some ambiguities in uh, the adult law, especially like, like the 2,000 foot buffer zone between uh, retail zones. We, 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 we talked about whether that meant 2,000 feet within the town of Deerfield or not, and it was, wasn't quite clear. And we spent a lot of time during the special permit process uh, for Sons Mass talking about whether APR land should be deemed impervious and considered or not considered in determining um, the uh, uh, square footage of a building that was allowable square footage. Um, and there was a lot of talk over the last year or two about uh, changing or, or reforming or updating Deerfield's zoning bylaws, um, making you know, consolidating those two changes, two parts into one and making some other changes. And then about last fall, or last, yeah, I guess last fall, uh, my client uh, approached me about the possibility of, of doing uh, so-called product manufacture or product preparation or making things that is extracting, compounding, blending, that sort of thing making marijuana products at this site, I explained to them that no, um, zoning didn't allow for it. It was cultivation, but not product uh, manufacture. And uh, the only way to uh, approve that, that use of the land would be through a zoning change. So knowing that you folks were strongly interested in changing the zoning bylaws and rewriting them basically to consolidate those two sections, it seemed to me taking into account that that's where you were, and I heard many 
grievances expressed in this room about the lack of staff and, and the administrative burden that you were suffering under. And given the fact that, 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 that I'm fairly familiar with zoning and that, that uh, I'm familiar with what Deerfield has gone through and that uh, I'm also familiar, as it happens, with the new marijuana law, having, among other things, been on the committee that wrote it, uh, it seemed to me that I was, in, in being a good neighbor, I was, I was in a position to help the town out. And so, and I had a, a, another dilemma I was facing here, and that is if I came back with a little tweak to the, to the existing zoning bylaw to accommodate product manufacture, um, well, then by the time we got to town meeting, uh, <laughs> the existing bylaw might be on the chopping block and there wouldn't be anything left to tweak. And so I didn't want to run into that problem. So it occurred to me that, as you know, when I came and bounced this off you several times, why don't I just put, do what you're going to propose to do anyway and I'll consolidate the two, uh, the two separate sections into one, fix these other little things, tighten it up a little bit, suggest to it, and hopefully save you a lot of work and meet my clients' needs as well. So I came, I came back to you and I, I uh, did that. I drafted a new bylaw, or new sections, I'm not saying a new bylaw, and uh, submitted drafts to you uh, starting, I think, in September, October, somewhere there. And I've been, and I, I've circulated these drafts very widely and tried to, tried to solicit uh, as much input as possible from a number, from everybody I can find. And I've got some good suggestions and, and, and people have been very helpful. And, uh, uh, and I adopted a number of those uh, suggestions just to make it a better piece of work. So, um, so we're, here we are. I have drafted this proposal, which we're calling, uh, what is it, new section, uh, section 4670. It, 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 uh, it repeals 4650 and 4650 and inserts a new 4670. And, uh, uh, I think it accomplishes what this board wanted to accomplish. It's not carved in stone. Certainly, uh, changes can be made to it. Uh, changes it can be made on the floor of town meeting, for that matter. Um, and I want to emphasize that in terms of form, that is, the way it's put together, they're not that, I mean, there are a lot of differences. I mean, there used to be two sections, now there are one, so forth. But in terms of substance, that is, affecting how people can use their land with regard to marijuana cultivation or product manufacture or retail sales and so forth. There are hardly any changes. The only substantive changes are to fix those ambiguities I mentioned and to authorize product manufacture in the RA district where Mill Village Road is, but only on parcels of five acres or more and only when co-located with a cultivation operation. So that's the gist, really, the substantive gist of those five pages of changes you're looking at. Lots of changes in form, very few changes in substance. And, and the most significant changes is that one I just mentioned, that is the, the uh, authorization of product, what we're calling in this, in this uh, draft product preparation. Product preparation which I think is more descriptive. I've never liked that term, manufacture. And by the way, the, the, the legal definition of manufacture um, in, the, um, um, in, the, in the regulations, I want to read that to you, sorry. Here it is. The, the definition of manufacture is to compound, blend, extract, infuse, or otherwise make or prepare a cannabis or marijuana product. Not that different from processing dairy products or other, other things, but, but uh, so, so that's the background and context. That's what brings us here. It may seem rather audacious for me to, or for anybody rather, to suggest uh, a, a change of this uh, of, of this length, but tried to, to, to do you a favor as well as doing my client a favor. Basically, it seemed like a good opportunity. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'd like to, uh, if, if I may, to uh, yield the floor to uh, Ali Kirkpatrick, who is the, the the company's director of governmental affairs. He came up from uh, Washington. You've met him before. 
He's going to tell you a little bit about the company and the, their actual operations. And then, then when, when he is uh, finished, I'm going to ask uh, my colleague Don Dubenbor to, uh, to have a word, and then we'll take any questions you have. So this is Ali Kirkpatrick from Harvest in, in Washington. Hello. Thanks for having us here today. Hi. I'll put together a little short slash show just so you have a little bit idea of what we do, what I do, and what our goals um, here are in uh, Deerfield are. So most importantly, we do want to create a strong partnership with the town of Deerfield. We came into the town of Deerfield just because we thought we could have a mutual interest in helping the economic prosperity of the city. So that's our number one goal is to create a partnership with you guys, um, the community here. Um, I came a couple of times and we did some events with the senior center and tried to build a relationship with them. Um, we're, um, we're very, very committed to the community. So I know one of the most important things that we want to do is be able to create employment opportunities for Deerfield residents. Um, when we open, we are expecting So we do want to create employment opportunities for deal for residents and a lot of our jobs that have very good benefits for residents and they also come with like high level training. Um, I know no will can get into that a little bit more as well. Also we prioritize working with local vendors so if we need some construction needs or cleaning anything we would first look for local vendors within Deerfield to be able to help that with the, with the the economy. Also, I know you guys are aware of the 2% um, host agreement where all of the sales uh, or 2% of gross receipts go to the town of Deerfield. So that can be used to for anything within the city. Also, there's a potential of generating different types of tax revenue in Deerfield, such as property tax. I know um, we acquired a building for about 3.2 million and here is the local taxes of property and real tax. It, I'm going to cover the uh, our zoning by law changes. So I'll skip that. And here's just a picture of some of the products that a processing facility will create. Um, it'll be more so like oils for like ointment that you can, that you can rub on your skin for muscle pain. Um, also, you could vape cartridges and whatnot, lotions, skin care, hair products, um, pretty much anything when we do that extraction process. So I just wanted to show you a uh, picture of some of the products that are designed. This is what you would be making in Deerfield? If you yes, this is what we've been making in Deerfield and we'll be using our own grow. We won't be shipping anything else from anywhere else to make these products. It'll be our own. And there's where it's at. Make sure you show that already right there on. The yes, let me point out that the, uh, the, 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 the greenhouse there uh, which used to be Binder Gardens, now Sons Mass. Uh, this facility, I mean, I should say this operation, this product manufacturer operation, if zoning allows it, would take place within the footprint of this building. We're not talking about any new construction. It's talking about doing it within the footprint of the greenhouse. It would, it would, in, um, so like those two residential houses that are sitting there, those aren't going to be converted, that would, they would all be within the, the greenhouse area? Well, the, the, the product manufacturer would be in the greenhouse. Those two houses, mm -hmm. we told you they'd be used as offices. So They're just office spaces, yeah. yeah. And has that been completed? Yeah. No, but not residences, but not any kind of manufacturing. No, 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 we wouldn't be using the houses for Okay, so here's just a little comparison. I know you're aware that we do have a special permit for cultivation. So once we open for a full year, we're expecting anywhere between 35 to $45 million of revenue. So 
two percent of that, um, we're, we're looking at getting the city about seven hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars from that. Um, also, um, like I said earlier, there's real and uh, personal property tax here, so you would also receive the tax money for that, and it'll be about forty to fifty jobs needed for the cultivation uh, process. How, but if we get the product manufacturing, product preparation bylaw passed. Um, it could be an additional $10 million of revenue for that, for the facility, which uh, brings about 900000 to $1.1 million to the city per year. That's about, that's 2% of the $55 million. Also, like I said, the product manufacturing, it, if that passes, it could increase the value, the property value at the facility, many more um, tax revenue there. And also, it'll generate 10 to 20 more jobs immediately to manage that process. And this facility will be very similar to the one that we have in Hancock, Maryland. Um, the uh, general manager down there, he has a good relationship with the community there. There's zero complaints from the neighbors. And this one is like in the residential community where people are actually living. And um, nobody has complained. Um, it's very safe, no public health issues. There's no burden on town resources. There's no change in traffic or uh, anything like that. And also, um, a couple months ago in December, um, I did a tour out there with a magazine called Maryland Leaf. And they did a pretty good article about us. And it's a very quiet operation. Um, very good reputation, and some of the quotes, um, well-earned reputation was born from their quality, uh, passionate cultivation manager, Kurt Dyer, and the hyper-efficient plant production with the strategic, strategic partnerships and initiatives designed to support the local community. Another quote, Hancock is home to one of the cleanest and most efficient growth in the state. Another quote I think is pretty important for South is Harvest went above and beyond to ensure that every door, room, and walkway was kept pristine and sterile, both by maintenance of the facility itself and the day-to-day -day habits of employees as patients' needs at, were at the heart of all employees at the facility. So um, pretty much everywhere we at, we have a good reputation. Everything is safe, quiet, and we work well with every city that we're in. And Whatever that the city need, I know the company is very dedicated in making sure that everything is really smooth and that we just keep a good relationship and work together. And that's pretty much all I have, unless you have any questions. Questions? As Dick mentioned, I'm John Mignandura. I'm here on behalf of the proponent of the bylaw change. I wanted to speak to a couple of things. At the end of the day, this, this proposed bylaw can't just be good for the proponent. It's got to be good for the town of Deerfield. And there's got to be a land use, a set of land use policy logics that drive the decision. Now let me first start by saying manufacturing is a very unfortunate a misnomer, in my opinion, in the CCC race. This is not manufacturing as we typically know it. It is more analogous to the way we allow farming farmers to process product of their production. Again, I don't want to get into whether or not it's agriculture for section three. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. But it is analogous to the way we allow farmers to vertically integrate their operations. So if I'm a farmer with, with, uh, with uh, timberland, I can run a sawmill on my property. I can produce wood products on my property. Those might look like manufacturing, but we've made a distinction in the law, Massachusetts, that allow us, allow farmers, because of the challenges of that, that whole sector of our economy, we've allowed farmers to do that. And there, there, was a, there is a logic to that. Here, the logic is driven by a couple things. One, the greatest uh, set of impacts in this industry 
on neighbors comes from the cultivation process. The greatest set, not the product preparation process. It is, and I've brought some of the, the experts from the company with me tonight, it is less odiferous, the, the product preparation. It is less energy intensive. It is, in many ways, an easier land use choice for the town of Deerfield than cultivation itself. What's important here is, okay, so why, why do we let co-location occur? If you don't, you're likely to have more marijuana establishments in your town, more locations for them. That presents its own set of problems, particularly for the zoning enforcement arm. One shop, one control, one set of bylaw and special permit conditions on it, much easier to enforce, better off. The vertical integration I speak to affects the ag economy. It will improve the value of farmland. We've already seen some of that occur in the first transaction between the pre-existing tulip farmers and Sons Mass. Uh, that was, that was uh, a happy outcome for, for, for the original farm operation there. And, that, and that's something that's not, not without uh, concern for us as we think about open space and the way we ask farmers to, to, uh, to preserve our open space for us uh, at great cost to themselves and their families. So increasing and, and, and benefiting the ag economy makes a great, great deal of sense. This is also a special permit process. So you have controls on how it occurs, the impacts it creates, the whole list, traffic, light, you know, the standard stuff that you guys have always dealt with. In this particular case, uh, no, no footprint changes are, 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 are going to be occurring. That won't be the case in, in, in the future, as you see others. There will maybe even new construction. <coughs> but you have tools for it in, in, in this new bylaw, and it's carefully crafted to do that. One of the things that I'd offer the board to consider is if they want um, the proposed bylaw reviewed by town council, that the proponent would be happy to pay for that so that town council could advise you uh, and react to it if that's something you want to do in, as you prepare for your, your report to the town meeting. But that's the, that's the land use logic for this. That's the policy logic for this. Uh, it, if, if it doesn't have that, it does, it does only benefit the proponent and doesn't serve, serve the town of Deerfield well. So I think that's the logic we're trying to push here and I think this bylaw does that. And it does it in a way that's enforceable, as I said, doesn't allow uh, the dispersal of these kinds of establishments. Uh, and the co-location piece is critical. I guess that's what I have. Are there questions for me? Next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing more. I would yes, like sir. you to entertain the comments from the public. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, do we have a public comment? Do we have other people here who would like to speak to this bylaw? Who have familiarized themselves with it? or in response to any remarks made by the proponent. Good evening. Uh, I would like, my name is Arjen Friend. Thank you. Uh, I am one of the people that sold the greenhouse property to Harvest. Mm -hmm. And I would like to take this opportunity to inform the board and the town that my experience in working with Harvest is that it's a very, very professional company. Mm -hmm. Good to work with. They do what they say. Um, additionally, I also think that um, 
allowing for the chaining, uh, a change of zoning is good for the town. Um, I think it's good for employment, it's good for the tax base. Uh, you already can tell by um, the amount of money that Harvest has invested in the town that they're committed. So I recommend the town and the board to change, uh, approve the, the zoning uh, promptly. Any questions? Thank you. Is there any other concerns? Any other thoughts? So. Uh, no, I think we we'll, we we'll continue it. Then we we'll look at ours. Okay. Because I, I I don't think that. I mean, okay. So, um, we have been also working on a um, zoning bylaw regulating marijuana um, cultivation land use in uh, the town. Um, one of the principles, the tenets on our of our work together has been that. Uh, actually, very much to Trinity Dubendorf's um, point that the cultivation of marijuana is very intensive and actually is more industrial than it is agricultural. It is more of, a, of an event, uh, so more like um, manufacturing than it is like agri an agricultural venture. Um, the, uh, the town of Deerfield is committed to supporting farm um, farming as, a, as an industry, um, but we are not convinced, and as, as no fault of go roots or harvest or anything, we are not convinced that this is really the way to move forward as a, I, I'm, I'm speaking for myself now, but I, I know it's part of what we've been, we've been talking about, to work um, forward with a town that um, was like to preserve open space and farmland. Um, it doesn't, the way um, marijuana establishments function in their cultivation seems more like an industrial usage of property than ag, agricultural. It seems, and so in, in point of fact, it does feel like um, the product preparation is less invasive and less complicated than the actual cultivation of the marijuana. Um, and so that's one point, is that I, I, do, I do think we want to um, continue and uh, jump in any time you guys want to talk else? about that. But um, that's, so that's one. Um, two, I, I'm not certain. Uh, the co-location, so that has that is, that is, uh, caused us to take a very uh, hard look at our original um, bylaw, um, including a special permit in residential agricultural areas. We feel, we're feeling less confident that that's good for our town. Um, yeah? Well, I, I can pick up from there. Yeah, thank I you. think that, uh, I don't want to say we rushed, but there was a big learning curve for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And as it was pointed out in this meeting, there was, um, support to deal with marijuana. Uh, it wasn't overwhelming, but it, it, nonetheless, it was a majority way to go forward. Um, we, uh, I think as this board, working with other boards, there was a lot of conflict in you know, how to go forward. And I, for one, wish that we would have gone slower and taken our time. But now we find ourselves in a situation where we've only had a couple of these things uh, transpired and that now we're getting a lot of pushback that you know we originally allowed this marijuana production to go anywhere in the RA district. Now it looks like it's going to go nowhere in the RA district. Uh, it, uh, to some people it's worked out really good but to a lot of people who look around they're not liking it so they're demanding change. What this change is going to end up being like we don't know. I, I, for one, appreciate the work that you've put into this, and I believe that I'm going to say Adam has reviewed this, and that uh, you know we we've been talking um, you know about what we would like to see changed, and uh, you know eventually he's going to be the one that's going to produce uh, whatever bylaws that we do uh, push forward to the town. Um, 
you know, as Mr. Dubendorf s spoke about, you know, them both being together and, you know, different types of agriculture with the wood and stuff like that, you know, I can kind of see that point too, but it, it seems difficult for me to say that you're going to allow this processing or not manufacturing, whatever, when I see, you know, small cosmetic things up there. Because to me, it's like, I understand the whole thing, but how do you say to somebody else, well, you cannot make face cream over here. You know, well, I use, get, get it from goat milk. Well, you know, but still, you're putting up a facility where you're going to produce the, the goat milk and make facial creams and add different chemicals and colors and put it in jars and packaging and stuff. You know, that's more of a commercial venture. And so that's why we were looking to keep all of these things in a commercial zone. There's a lot of land in Deerfield, but our commercial area, all of that's quite small and there's not a lot of area to develop in this town. Now, if you start opening up farmland, you know, we got a lot of places that we can develop. That's not what our community wants. You know, and I've made it quite clear from day one that I'm, I'm personally offended that, you know, to save all the farmland, our local government takes my money. They don't give me a choice. And they take a good chunk of it. And they say, okay, now we're gonna preserve this farmland. And, and I've seen that not be the case. And a lot of other people are like that. And they keep coming to me as one of the members and say, look, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I say, well, wait a minute. You know, you are the people that are ultimately gonna decide this. You know, we can put different things in front of you, but it's your choice. So, uh, you know, I think that we would continue to work uh, with our attorney and, uh, you, know, if, you know, I'm sure that he's reviewed your things. He'll get our input and we'll see what the final product looks like going forward. Um, May I just say that uh, you know what our objectives and goals are, and I'd be happy to work with Adam or the board or Chris to, if, 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 if melding these two proposals together would be something that would be productive and useful for the town. I'd be happy to pursue that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get to town meeting and see the voters facing two different bylaws. I think that's a little awkward. Huh? Well, it, it, I think it would be. I, I mean, yeah, I, think I agree. We'll, we we would put forward whatever final comes from uh, Adam, and you know, I don't think this board has any issues with you working at Adam Marlowe. I do remember in, in in a previous position that the, the town council didn't want to be inundated by different people calling them. Yeah. You know, and so I, I'm not sure what the outcome was because I've left there. But uh, I, I think that you know he'd welcome any input that you have. Uh, I know one of the concerns that the board of selectmen had at the time is you know running up the town's legal bills <laughs> by other inputs. Well, so I don't know how that's all going to work. That's why they exactly. just offered <laughs> you. you know, we appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. You know. right. No, and I, I also I, I want to uh, separate a couple of concerns here, and one is that and. Kudos to Attorney Evans, to Attorney Dubendorf. You put a lot of effort into uh, making something very viable. Uh, integrity is right through, and you've been very transparent about your, um, your intention. However, it does feel like the intention is from Gogurtz. It's hard not to see this, for me, it's hard not to see this as a, an endorsement of Gogurtz, and, and I don't, I feel that's a very awkward way to propose land usage um, regulation, is to say, well, we've got this great company, and so we're going to make it uh, we're going to make it work for them with our bylaws. Which, in, in a funny kind of way, I feel like we already kind of did. Mm -hmm. To be fair, we saw an opportunity to move forward, and we went with the RA because that seemed like it did seem like something that was going to be good for our farmers. I don't, I, I think we had farmers that benefited from this, but I don't see how mm, that benefit is going to be as appealing to the rest of the town moving forward as we see the, the, um, the way the cultivation of marijuana in New England is, proceeds. We've got a lot of concerns. We put in propane tanks to keep things oh. warm and to, you know, to move things forward to, in a profitable m mode. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be outside. It's not going to be um, something that's like growing a another agricultural um, it product. Is, it's funny. It's not funny, but one of the things that you just mentioned, one of the biggest or the most numerous complaints that I got 
was, you know, people concerned about climate change. And then they say, they're going to burn 16,000 gallons of propane to keep the, well, what's going on here? Why isn't it more energy efficient? And I'm like, well, don't ask me. I'm just saying, well, that's what they were looking for. That, that was, and I, w I was kind of shocked of all the things. That was one of their big things. That you should disagree. have reminded them that this was a greenhouse, not a warehouse. Yes, they've got propane in case they lose heat in the middle of the winter. Right, right. But they don't want to lose the entire crop. But I'm, just sh I'm sharing that, yeah. you know, how, you know, one concern turns into another, you know. Sure. So, I mean, it's like, you know, and yeah. sometimes you feel, as volunteers, you know, you see your friends and neighbors and all of a sudden, say, hey, what about this? Hey, it's like, wait a minute, I didn't do this. And, you know, it's, but you try to bring the response back here and try and figure out what, you know, what, what's going to work well for our town? What were the intentions of our town? You know, what do the people really want? And that makes it hard because everybody's got different opinions. So, so Madam Chair, a uh, couple comments. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think that the analogy to uh, agriculture in uh, cultivation is inept. I don't think it's mm -hmm. inappropriate. <laughs> the way this industry works right now, uh, you, can, you can grow hemp. That's a legal product. It smells. You can grow marijuana if you get a special permit in mm -hmm. some cities and towns. And the industry, in my opinion, has been very sleepy and lazy about the major impact of outdoor cultivation, and that is odor. The use of greenhouses is one of the, the more elegant midway grounds mm -hmm. between the industrial model, which is, you know, stories full of, of, of well-lit, heavily lit growing areas inside buildings and old warehouses. You're seeing that across Massachusetts. Uh, the greenhouse model allows the major energy source to come from the sun. That's a dis just dramatic energy improvement over the warehouse model. And what pulls people away from, and, and by the way, the greenhouse model also does for marijuana what it does for other products. It allows them to grow, have a longer grow season, mm -hmm. so that you can grow a, a longer period of time. You can't do that with the outdoor piece. The fact of the matter is that in both the indoor grow and the greenhouse grow, the biggest impact, i.e. odor, is managed in a way that it's not in the in outdoor greenhouse. grow and managed well now. Mm -hmm. The technology I've got, I've got my friend Noel Blake or Noel with me tonight, and he's the chief scientist. He can speak to that if you'd like. That's a big distinction. Now let me talk to your concern. You had one about uh, uh, processing your own and making a distinction between you. You can make uh, soap out of goat's milk, but somebody else can't make soap. Because of the way we've treated agriculture in the state, tried to favor it and tried to preserve the, 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 uh, that part of our economy, we have allowed farmers to vertically integrate. There's even a case that says, if I have dairy cows, I have beef cows, I can have a slaughterhouse on my farm, hmm. even when I can't do that in that district otherwise. So we've, we've allowed those uses as incidental and I think there's a logic to that. That vertical integration has a, both a land use logic that I spoke to, but also an economic logic. And that's what we're just trying to capture here. Mm -hmm. I don't think, you're, you're absolutely right. I wouldn't be here if this wasn't good for the proponent. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna apologize that for, but I, I, would, I would also have done that proponent a great disservice if, we didn't, if I didn't think through the land use consequences mm -hmm. and the policy consequences. Mm -hmm. So the notion that, from my perspective, your notion that we wouldn't allow any cultivation in anywhere in the, the RA district or in the RA district is surprising to me. So because I think it has uh, opportunity for the ag economy. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. That's straightforwardly where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. And by the way, the town meeting at the end of the day can decide this. I mean, right. they will. I mean, they will. One of the, th an, an, a large issue um, also with this is that we, we wanted to help farmers. And we saw one example. Yes. 
yours that went forward. The farmer moved half a mile down the road. Now we have more big greenhouses right out there where everybody can see this. What's stopping him from doing the exact same thing he did before? Oh, what if Jerry Jones from Texas comes up to Massachusetts and says, hey, I want to spend $50 million. I'm going to give you $10 million for your new greenhouses. He'd sell in a heartbeat. Then he's going to go down behind Williams and start again. And, and this is what we're trying to wrap ahead of. Yeah. This could continue yeah. and continue. And as word spreads, then R.J. Reynolds says, hey, wait a minute, there's a lot of money in this thing. We're going to go up there and we're going to do this. And where does Deerfield, you know, and you being an attorney, they come in here with the applications, it's kind of like a done deal. We can propose all the changes we want now. Their application was in before, you know, we posted any change. So, you know, we kind of feel like we're scrambling now. What do we do? And I hear that. I'm a carpenter. Yeah, but let, let, me, let, let me speak to that because I, I, think, I think that's a, a fair concern. If, if the gentleman to my right sells his greenhouses and puts in, and puts in an alternative, call it marijuana cultivation, and, and has no different impacts to his neighbors than his current operation, I think you should be happy as, as all get out from a land use policy point of view. But it's already had an impact. Yeah, I was going to say, but, it, but, it's, curr but it's, currently, it's currently exempted. That's by state statute. His work is exempt. Oh, I, I, and, and I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. so it's exempt. It, take, uh, sec uh, section 3 takes it right out of our, our local hands in Massachusetts sure. for all sorts of reasons. A whole bunch of Section 3 exemptions. But you're right. But uh, from a land use point of view, where we assess impacts, if it were the same or lesser in the same footprint, mm -hmm. how have we done a wrong thing there? How is that a bad policy outcome? Well, that's but the it's question. not the same but process. As it's your, not the same. And, and it isn't. You're right. It isn't. I agree with you there. But I'm talking about impacts. Well, let me share well, an impact. There'll be with a you. different impact, yeah. obviously, because you have to have much more security. Uh, traffic probably could be the same. I don't know that. But, you know, he's raising something, putting in a pot, talking about manufacturing now here. Everybody has a different uh, yeah, yeah. No, I get definition you. on manufacturing. Yeah, so no, I, I get you there. But my point is, at the end of the day, that's what you assess in a special permit process. That's all I'm saying. That's how you, you look mm -hmm. at those. And by the way, those are discretionary. You know that. Those yes. are discretionary. Right. Everybody's going to have an opinion. And hopefully yeah. our townspeople will come in and speak their mind yeah. and give us some direction. Sure. No, I get that. Mm -hmm. I get that. And, and I think uh, your, your, your question was a good one. How does this benefit the town? How did the first decision benefit the town? I think it has benefited the town tremendously to allow ours to come in and to allow farmers like us to reinvest the proceeds of selling the beginning house back into the, into the community which we have done. And allowing to move the town forward by going with the changing in the economy and, 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 and adapt to the change in the marketplace and the challenges farmers are up against is only beneficial to Deerfield. And I think it's not just the money that we have invested from the proceeds of the greenhouse, it's also the money that's coming in from from harvest right now, plus the um, uh, employees uh, that are being hired, uh, as well as uh, the increase of the tax base, uh, town can use it. We've lost quite a bit of uh, business already. So in, in I, I think this is a, the decision uh, exactly a year ago is a good example of helping to move the town forward. It shows. Well, I, I, I agree with you that the, t the town can use the revenue. Lord knows we spend it faster than drunk and sale it. But, uh, you know, my point is, and I think you'd agree, if somebody came along tomorrow and offered you $10 million for your new greenhouses, it'd be adios. You'd sign the papers and you'd go somewhere else. I haven't gone anywhere. We already moved. No, the but he says, up the road. So right, maybe but not. you would do it again for $10 million. Would you and do? I would do. Of course I would. Well, and, and what I'm saying is that, well, the majority of the people in the town don't want that. I, I, I've had no complaints. Well, well, I'll give them your phone number. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are very concerned when there was a talk about maybe creating one on Child's Cross, uh, not, not Child's, but Wells, is it? Wells Cross, right. Yeah, Wells. Well, there's uh, a lot uh, of people who were A concerned. cultivation property? Yes. Uh, you had one that was coming or they, made an application? I think they, they it was made an, an inquiry. Yeah. An inquiry, okay. Yeah, yeah they even had a public meeting here uh, speaking to the public and stuff. Yeah. And people are more apt not to be in favor of that 
Uh, they don't come to the meetings, but they'll concern where the next one's going to pop up. I don't hear anybody saying, oh, great, it's going to be right here, you know. Also, that our regulations, and you know, this is this is, uh, we we're looking down the road, and I don't want to I don't want to look too far down the road. Imagine all kinds of things, but we're looking at a company. We are, feel very lucky. We're looking at a company that has integrated into the town. Has it shows up, even when we don't. Um, that, uh, <laughs> that that wasn't that, necessary. <laughs> that, uh, we almost had to send everybody home. Next, thank God you got. It. And that um, that that has made making a commitment to to a town that is looking for you know new revenue streams. We don't want to though open up to the not no grit, the the no grits, right? Um, and so that is one of our biggest concerns is that whenever we are faced with a special permitting process, we, we don't want to set ourselves up for a bunch of judgments like that. We want our process, our regulations, to do a good bit of vetting for us already. Okay. It's one of the things about the co-location, I have to think about this some more, because um, the thing about the co-location is there are other sites in town that if we were to say, no, you have to do that in, in that commercial, a C1, C2, you could do it. Yeah. There are places in yeah. town, that's what we want those places to be that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and so we're kind of why not you know why not make it that way um, and for us that would just you know Gogrits notwithstanding the next group that comes through they don't have this you know all our trusted people here we've learned to it's somebody else and uh, and and you've been very apparent I, I appreciate you know the the army of folks that you bring to bear so that we do get a sense because behind an LLC we have no idea what it is so yeah. uh, we've not we've been very happy with that or at least I, I can't no, speak for no. everybody but I have felt very comfortable working with this group and I mean another little shot at us but Dick makes more of our meetings than some of us so <laughs> <laughs> I mean he, his his accounting of of our, our process is, is, is legitimate he's been here right right with us um, and always transparent about where he stands on, on this, um, as, as we are very generous with our opinions, too. Um, but anyway, I think that that's one of the things, just to, with this in front of us, it doesn't, with this and you in front of us, it would be, oh, yeah, yeah. no flag on the play, let's go. Um, but I see a flag yeah, I on the play just because I, I don't see that regulation is, should be legislated around uh, a company as good as it yeah. is at that. I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you. I think uh, as this process unfolds, uh, we'll stay involved. Yep. Yep. I think yeah. that's. We appreciate your input. We really do. Yeah. Yep. I mean, because we're all volunteers. Yeah, no, I understand. And, and we're, we're all learning tonight. this we industry. We don't know anything until no, no. the next time we get together, and it's like, geez, you know. Yeah. So, I hear that. So we'll stay involved. I'd just like to make one final comment, yep. and, that, and this goes back to perhaps background and context, is that legalization of marijuana is a pretty radical change. You yes. know, it's, it's come on us all pretty fast. Uh, I like to call this period of time we're in the awkward interval between prohibition and normalization. And we're not at a normalization yet. When, when marijuana is, is viewed as like another consumer product, it's no big deal. We'll be there, but we're not there yet. We're like and, halfway and, there. And those of us, they're up here who will say if. I mean, I'm going to say if, if it becomes normalized. I mean, and to oh. what extent? I mean, ye of little it, faith. I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm a school teacher. <laughs> oh. I teach middle school. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have, um, and I never worked, I worked the pickle shop while my sister and brothers worked under the cheesecloth and the. You know, tobacco. tobacco. Sure, tobacco, tobacco sure. So we, we know these industries up yep. here, and there aren't tobacco. We have a lot of lovely tobacco barns, yeah. but we don't have a lot of tobacco anymore. So, you know, we're, we, and I, I don't, I'm not saying, oh, my crystal ball says, you know, here today, marijuana gone tomorrow, but I do want to be sure that we're not setting ourselves up for an industry that the moment Alabama and Georgia legalize marijuana, we're, you know, History. later for you. Yeah. So I, I, I just, this is a kind of a caution that, that we have in terms of our regulation, and we are, we are happy as clams that Gobritz is here um, making this work, but we don't necessarily, we're not 
jumping fast. Well, we'll stay involved. Yes. And can I just ask, and, as you think about this and talk to your colleagues and read about what's going on in other cities and towns, try to think especially about what is the actual impact of the marijuana operation on the public health, the public safety, or the character of the community. I hear a lot of grumbling but it's very hard to see any real impact. Now, visual impact with the greenhouses, with this new greenhouse, I can understand, but that's not a marijuana operation. But, but if it were, it would be a visual impact. But what, what, what actual effect on the public health, the public safety, has this or, or has marijuana operation in Deerfield uh, had or in any other town, for that matter. Well, we don't. But we, we I know don't. you don't think we about don't other towns, but, <laughs> but those, those are the other. I think, I think in you know, 10 years from now, we'll probably shrug when the word marijuana comes up and wonder you know, what, was, what was the fuss all about. But well, we're, we're not, not there yet. <laughs> but Dick, we're not, I don't think that observers are, it's not the marijuana issue. It's, it's like all the building, the development type thing. It, it, it's like, I, I, I try to, I find it hard for myself to explain this, but it's like a lot of, I think a lot of my friends are just real nice people, just real nice people. And they don't like a lot of this, but they're not the kind of people that are gonna come here and gripe about it. You know, they might all keep, you know, this, that, other thing, but it's like they wanna see change, and that's what they're trying to give us, or <laughs> they are pushing us to, to do this, you know. Um, and, and we're having a very hard time trying to figure out where we go. And that some of the people that are around this operation, you know, are, they're the biggest ones that are complaining. And I'm like, where were you? Why aren't you out here, you know? I ain't gonna get involved. So we want to, we want to go forward and see if we can, I don't know, I don't know if you use the word straighten out, but see if we can get it to where everybody here is happy. And that, um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's certainly what we're going to try to do, you know. Right. Everyone. Maybe and we do, a good number. And, we, and at least I, for one, can appreciate what this uh, company can do for the town as far as economically. Um, and I, I think, like Rachel said earlier, that, you know, if processing at that location is not that appropriate, there's other places in town that are very close by that could accommodate that type of thing. Uh, one of the things, or another one of the things, is that, you know, how do we, you know, say that if we allow processing of this product, how come we don't allow processing of other products, you know? And it, as you said, and we all know, it's not an agricultural thing. Um, they might change that law, too. Who knows? But, you what know. statute is, is pending in the House right now? Oh, House 3519 or 49, I think it is, that's looking to change to add cultivation to to the ag definition in chapter 128. It, oh, it's still in, or, uh, in committee. They do such committee. a wonderful job the first time around. It, it'll probably be such a great job this time, too. Well, I, well, in any, I think the legislature's. In any, yeah. No, I, 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 I could tell you this. I, I hope you can achieve that goal of making everyone happy. The, part of the problem with uh, our boards and towns, and God bless you all for doing it, is that you end up making decisions. And decisions- Never make everyone happy. Never make everybody happy, right? Somebody wins and somebody loses and- Hopefully we make the majority of people happy. There you go, and, and, and my hope is that you always make good decisions. That's, That's the, because I think that, that shows the leadership you gotta have. And, and so we're not unsympathetic to what you're trying to do. And we'll stay, as I said, stay plugged in and involved. One, one final point, if I may, to respond to Kip. Uh, you mentioned that where were those people who are now grumbling? That's a good question. But for everyone, every person who failed to grumble before, but is, is opening their mouths now, there are probably 10 people who supported the marijuana reform, but kept their mouths shut. People don't talk openly, in my experience, about their embrace of our new law until they go into the privacy of a voting booth. Then it's clear how, where they stand. But that was a big, big shock to me personally um, to realize that, that for so many years that I, I actually advocated, I advocated for reform of the laws and, and hit stone walls after stone wall after stone wall. But then when we gave the public the opportunity to go into the privacy of the voting booth, they said yes in almost an underwhelming number. 
And I'm thinking, where were those people all those years that I was, you know, I mean, I'd spoke to a few Kiwanis clubs, but not that many. And, <laughs> but what I realized is that people didn't, they didn't need to be educated about marijuana. And I'm generalizing here, but, but you know, the mass, vast numbers of people didn't really need to be educated. They need to be given the opportunity to express their true views. And that's what happened in 2012 and 2008 and 12 and 16. Uh, so just. No, and, and I get that. And I, I believe that a lot of people like myself thought that, you know, decriminalizing marijuana was not that bad of a thing uh, because there was that's a lot right. of it out there. You know, why should somebody go to jail or have this criminal record for just having a little pot or doing this? I, I get all of that. That's not the part that troubles me. I shouldn't say troubles me. The, the part that we're dealing with is everything else that comes along with it. And people are, are constantly saying to me, a lot of people, even the people who support marijuana, well, I didn't realize this or I didn't realize that. I mean, the money this town has spent, um, you know, just on our lawyers fees de dealing with this over the last couple of years and all the meetings and time. And, you know, now we're trying to deal with zoning and all these other issues that come along and people, I didn't, I just didn't realize it. it was, you know, I just thought we'd, why send somebody to jail because he had, you know, three ounces of pot. And I think if, if that ballot question had 6,000 words explaining all these things that communities would deal with, people would look at, what the heck, you know? I think it would have been different. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, no, people, I think we're not really getting any more no, no, pertinent not, information. No, I know, I think we're, we're digressing. Here. And I would, like to, um, I would like to propose, since we do have our own um, bylaw regulation that we're working on, and we'd like to be able to look at these side by side and look at and see. Mm -hmm. I think that that would give us an opportunity to do that. I'd like to continue this meeting till the 24th, the famous 24th. If anyone would like to move that, uh, that would be great. Sure, I'll make that motion. Move the continue. Continue. The 24th. Continue this meeting, this open hearing, until the 24th of February. Are we closing the public hearing? Uh, we're going to continue it. I think we're going to continue it. Because we have another because. one, because we have another one before us, and we want to look at. I think we want to look at both, and I don't think if we're if we're um, if we close it, then we have to move at some point to act on it. And I think that we want to look at them side by side. I don't think there's any rush to close this hearing, um, other than that we're going to close it at some point. And I don't think there's a whole lot more. If there's more to bring forward, that would be great. Um, but at this point, I think that we'd like to be able to look at both of them side by side, and that way we'd have sure. both both public hearings open at the same time. So, I'm ready to vote. Second. I'll second the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Did you vote? Now? I'd like to be opposed. Not opposed. Opposed. I, I would like to close the meeting. You want to close, close the, the hearing? Okay. Close, close the public comment. Close the public part comment. Of it. I, I, we've heard what we and we've heard from the public. Well, just, just I believe I'm speaking properly here, that when we get another uh, proposal from our attorney, yeah. we still have to have a public hearing for that. Yes, we do. So Absolutely. there's no sense of closing this now because we wouldn't be able to okay. go through that pro oh, yeah. process properly. Like I said, I'll just vote against Th That's fine. That's okay. So uh, okay. 310 yes. uh, in favor of continuing public this hearing. public hearing until uh, February 24th Fourth. at 7 o'clock. Um, and at that point, I think we'll have another another public hearing. Um, we have some old business, which has to do with our our bylaws that we have been considering. Um, before maybe we get to that, I think we would love to hear from Scott Raymer. Um, this was a proposal. Um, sorry, something that was other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours um, in advance. Um, and Scott is here. Do you guys have that in front of you? He has, um, thank you so much. Oh, I, yeah, and I think we have copies, but here, is everybody? Okay. So this is for the decommissioning. This is a, um, this is a letter uh, setting forth their um, intention to post a surety bond of $47,525 to meet the town's decommissioning requirement. Um, this number was arrived at by Kevin McCaffrey's assessment. Um, at one point, let's see, it says, uh, this is just the last paragraph, again, back to my English teacher self, given that the estimate was provided by a third party, right? 
um, and that the estimate does, estimate does not account for any salvage value. So the salvage value, if the decommissioning happens, you're decommissioning it anyway. We're just having that number just in case you just guys case run happens, away. Yes. So the salvage value um, is not accounted for. Yeah, um, that's true. That's, so it's, that's it's just, it out. is what it is. That's true. And Good that's point. what Rammer's, I mean, that's what, mm -hmm. sorry, not you, Scott, but... Uh, well, the idea with that would be, and good evening, everybody, Scott Reamer. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. no, that, that's okay. Uh, thanks for hearing me last minute. We're, we're working with our financing party. Yep. They're wanting us to get all our ducks in a row and oh. I's dotted, T's crossed. Yep. Um, quickly to the solid value, your point is, is well made. The only idea there would be that if the town did have to, to remove things, that there is value in the other in that. And, and that the town would have that in addition to the... The, the 47,000. But we ignore the sal any potential So you're just value. throwing that in and saying, and that's yours too. That's also yours um, But too. Kevin's... Kevin uh, McCaffrey, who is the third-party civil engineer um, from uh, SWCA, they they didn't figure we, that we in at all. They just are it. counting on uh, yes. what it would take to, to take it down and get rid of it. That's right. That's right. So uh, we're voting to accept this. Is that what we need to do? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what exactly what you guys need to do to make it happen. We're just asking for our financing party to be able to take a letter on the town of Deerfield. So that's what you need uh, to know. Yeah, like okay. letterhead on the town of Deerfield that says we accept the decommissioning amount of 47525 um, in the form of a charity bond to be posted before a building permit is issued. Um, and th that's basically all we need right now from the town. Okay. Um, so that's from our, our um, accountant, our town accountant? Is, who do you need it from? No. Well, you guys are the authority. Right, yeah, so it's, I from, think it's, it's from the planning board. I think if you just ask uh, Sue, Sue to, I'll talk to, to Sue it, about and that. then, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Sean, or you, or myself. Could the, the only, it's easy, yeah. The only okay. other question is the last sentence on the end there, which just says whether or not we would need to form a full, a full formalized legal contract between us and the town, or if you know we have an agreement where the letter says these are the terms, we have to post that bond, that surety bond, before the or before the building terms. So you issued. just want to know how how formal? What, if a letter from us does it for your financial people, that'll do it for, that, for our side. Yeah. I suspect that's enough for us too. Okay. But so and, and basically, I'll, you know, sure. saying we can't fill until we give you the surety bond, um, and we'll have to find that. So, like I said, hopefully this is pretty short. Perfect. Yeah, that's all there is. Okay, so um, in the next day or so, I'll, I'll talk to Sue. I'll find out who can, you know, put okay. that together for you, and um, then you'll have that letter. And we send that to just um, you. You can yeah, you can just email, email a copy of it to me. Sue has my email address. Okay. Yep. Um, quite Not, easily. Not Dan. Uh, Dan, yeah, Dan, Dan, the, that was written to my colleague. Perfect. He's so it will go to you. Financing parties at same same thing. Um, so, so that's okay. Yep. Needed, yep. I don't okay think that vote's needed. Thank you guys. Uh, very well, much. we could take a vote to accept. Okay. This. We yeah, that, would, that would actually help me. Yeah. I, I, I'll mind. make a motion to accept the uh, decommissioning proposal submitted by um, Hexagon. Hexagon. Or actually, could you say Old Frontier Brewery? Oh, geez. Solar okay. Solar LLC. Or the old old Deerfield. No, Old Frontier old Solar. Old Frontier Solar three. three. Old Frontier. And someone solar from three. Frontier Solar Three. Old Frontier three. Solar Three. Um, a, a surety bond. Uh, surety that we bond. will receive a surety bond. A surety bond. So someone surety who bond. the forty-seven thousand. They feel that's. Yes. Yeah. So you want to second it? I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Opposed. You guys very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Just taking the time. Yeah, I really uh, it, but he's really kind of like Good night. Eight thousand dollars just to grade it. Are you um, Sparta? Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, did you have a question? We have more like a presentation. Come step up to the microphone. Yes. Do you want to go first? Do you guys mind if because Chris is here and maybe if you let. Um, I don't know. Do you want to stay for this? And we'll, we could go over that. I just feel like if we don't set a public hearing date for our bylaws, we need to do that sooner rather than later. We need to be able to open that for the 24th. <laughs> yes. I do too. I think we should run through the. the Are we talking about marijuana? Or yeah. No. Flood yeah, yeah, yeah. Flood planes. No, marijuana. He's talking about marijuana? Yes. Because ours. Our 
bylaws are here somewhere. But anyway, we've got, and we should look that over because our use, our use table, for example, is very different from the one that is presented by. Is this the one that you did, or I, is this I, I what did, we got from Mr. Evans? No, that's Evans. That's right. Oh, okay. I didn't know. So, well, I didn't know that, that, that you were you well, were bringing that marijuana proposal forward. Yeah. Oh, yes. So I misspoke then. So it's not. Um, um, Adam Costa. That's no, right. it's us. It's, I mean, it's, it's us. The planning board, really. We've been working on it. Well, I, I mean, I understand that, <laughs> but who is going to, who's actually going to We're draft in. it for us? It's drafted. I, I, it's drafted. It's done. It's in our box. So we need to present that to everybody. That's the thing. And yeah. I think that, and I don't have copies of it. She said she was going to make copies well, of it. I have a copy of it. I don't have At the last meeting, I thought we were going to hash over, like, we had a few more things to look right. at. We talked about what areas maybe possibly it was going to go in. And which, is what, which is what I did. And I, I put together two overlay districts, an MO1 district and an MO2 district that are very specific to one is just for retailers and one is for cultivation and, and production and so forth. And I, and I put together a, a recommendation for which districts those should be in. And there's also some things about buffer zones that Rachel and I have talked about a little bit. But a recommendation for how to handle buffering of residential uses. So those are things that we worked on since the last discussion on this. So did you send out those? Well, well I sent it to Rachel. I have it. Um, Rachel. Oh, hi. <laughs> so. And it's mine to disseminate, but I'm just wondering. Is there a chance that we could meet um, separately before the 24th to just go over that? So you mean you, us? Yes. Well, if we're going to have a meeting, it's going to be to the public anyways, but you mean no, but, I mean, no, but not an open, I mean, not a public hearing. So, right, so, so that we're looking hearing. at it one more time. This is my ball dropped. Well, but I think it's important that we do. I mean, I, I know that we're all hard pressed for time, but I think that it's, it's important that we get together and talk about it so we don't have something at the last minute say, no, you know, this is not what we wanted. Right, right. exactly. We, you know, yeah. we need a consensus on the board, too. Yeah, yeah. especially since it's ours. We're, we're crafting something okay. that is, you know, that is different. And we've been working on this. We're, we're looking to get... Would you mind sending me what you have? Do you, do you have something? <laughs> I, I do. You know, you know, I would send it to you all if, if I had emails for everybody. I would just yeah. be doing that uh, automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know about these guys, but I'll keep them on. Um, okay. I can do that. I can get everybody to that. You, you can, can, you can just send it to me. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. And I'll send, I'll send it out to you. Got, I got the agenda, so whoever sends the agenda out has two so, Yeah, 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 yeah. Do, do you want us to schedule a working to session to just do that? And now, do we, can we do that? Who's yeah, up for that? We, we can't, this? but we, same thing, we need a quorum and we have to post it. Yeah. Yeah. But you can even, But it's a 20, it's a 48 hour posting. It's yeah. not a, right. it's not a, it's not a public hearing. You could even do it in. In an afternoon or something like that. What do you guys have for time? Uh -uh. <laughs> what day? Max, I know is okay. Fridays and Mondays. Six o'clock is a problem for me. So, well, let's no, not well, do it at six. Even any, even the day, night, any day. He's um, been working six tenants. Is Friday's a good day. No, I think I got work Saturday. Oh, I'm pretty much available anytime. Yeah, I am the same. We don't do anything anymore. Well, what, if we, what if we go next? What if we go next Monday? Is John going to be around? I think John's going to be here. All right. Why don't we? Why don't we schedule oh, something? No, but we should. I'm sure he's going to. Well, but I know, but we I can know. do it 48 hours. Okay. So we could do this over email. We could okay. make a time over email, yes. um, and then we could have a working session, post it 48 hours, work on this, and then hopefully. But I really would like to do it sooner rather than later. Oh, I agree with you. Why don't we do it next Monday then? Monday. We try it. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That's a holiday. No, it's Isn't not. it? I don't think so. Oh, it's the following Monday. When's the president? Oh, president's day is the 17th. Oh, yeah. Coming to my it. house for dinner. I don't think I can. What? Well, I'm, I'm going to try hard. I'm going to be in Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm going to a car show. You got sick last year, too. Oh, boy. Okay. So, Monday. We're going to shoot for Monday. Monday what time? <gasps> what do you guys think? 7 o'clock? It's Monday. Next month, the 10th? Yeah. Yes, 7 o'clock, I'm here. Okay. Roger? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have anything going and on. I'll try to find Aunt, Aunt Mary and John and Paul. Yeah, and Paul. All we need is four, turns out. And it says seven. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chris.
So we'll have a con I guess Matt yes. yes. Yeah. I will make sure that that is my goal. I have been just sitting on, but the use table looks different and takes it out of our that's what we talked about. Last yes, time. oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So it's to answer your question about dinner, yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So we feel so badly. We're going to be so brief. Oh, good. It's a long meeting for you guys. And in fact, so we were supposed to be on the agenda, from my understanding. But Sue we are. You are. You are. We are. We were told yeah. we are. And that's all? You are. It's right here. Sparta. That's all I got. Okay. Sparta. Questions. So. Oh, yeah. No, we were supposed to be, I think we're on the agenda, agenda. And then um, Sue got back. Oh, no, so, no, we were told we, we were told that we were. Oh. Yeah, she told me that we could just come so, in. And in good. Fact, Here you are. Fact, we're actually happy that it turned out this way. Great. Because of the... Oh, the previous. Oh, my God. Gotcha. Lord. Gotcha. <laughs> so, okay, so introduce yourselves. Oh, okay. My name is Robert Wolf. Sparta. Robert Wolf. Yes. Are you on our list here? And I'll get you to sign that. Don't, no, no, don't forget no, to no, sign no, this no, before you leave. Okay. Um, and we... So we have a company called... Let me, if you don't mind, let me... Sure. Give you these. And, that, and these are very truncated. You'll get more in the future. But we have a. So we have a team called Grow Space New England that finds and develops land sites for cannabis cultivation. We raise the capital, we build the buildings and we lease them to licensed cultivators. And we have a 13 acre piece of property here in Deerfield that is in the industrial zone. Uh, it's a right along I-91. And, and I don't have a locust map there, so it's a little bit, I apologize. One of my notes this evening, but I wanted to show it. But it is right by Yankee Candle. No. So it's if you go right old, on Plain Street, Plain Road. It's right where the old um, drive-in movie is, right? No, no. Oh, really? Yes, in front. Yes. There used to be a drive-in theater there. Yes. There's I'm actually from, a map on the last two I'm pages. From, There's two from maps. So, I'm, uh, so let me let me give this as a. Uh, yes. yes. Sorry for the impromptu. Yeah, so you have you have a massive plan, yep. right? So you have a plan. So um, we have we have 20 sites in Massachusetts that we're doing what we're doing with you tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, both basically we're targeting seven, seven sites. We presented all over the country. We're a major exhibitor in the Las Vegas show. We're all over. I mean, mm -hmm. we know the industry a little bit mm -hmm. in detail. And it's a lovely piece of property. It will host, we think. Well done, two of those tier one, tier two entry level greenhouses. Mm -hmm. They're high tech greenhouses and fiberglass composite material, like an indoor building with a closed roof. All the mechanical and everything is enclosed, and it's you could grow anything in them, and they do. So down the road, if cannabis doesn't. Uh, Moves to Georgia. We have one of our partners is doing heirloom tomatoes for Whole Foods Market in Heaven. So the use of these buildings is really magnificent. And I see this, I'm, I'm, I, my, my background was radio stations in Vermont <laughs> to uh, projects out in California. And I was introduced in California in agriculture where there's a great movement for the farm to fork and farm to table program, right? Okay. And I see that happening here. And that would be great for our economy, growing tomatoes, asparagus, zucchinis, whatever. And a local market, so you don't have any transportation costs and you've got better products. And greenhouses are the way to go. So uh, there's a longevity for this. There's, you know, there's, there's beyond, beyond the horizon, there's multiple uses for these facilities. But for right now, the cannabis is the high value crop. And so our, our, our deliverable is that we can develop these, raise the capital so that we're really gap filling for all these people that can't raise the capital. 80% of the projects across our desk will never be built. They're too expensive, the capex costs are too high, and their operating costs they have no clue what they're doing. So we basically have come in as the legal resource, the administrative resource, I have an MBA in finance, and also an accountant, and I'm, I'm an engineer, and I'm an attorney. 
You spent too much time in school. I did. I, you know, I did that in my 40s. And that's, uh, anyway. Um, so we, we have, we viewed this, I, I was brought in, we came out here, I did solar projects out here in 2006, 2007. And um, I came, I was finishing a broadcast project in Sacramento, and I came back out, I'm at Bar in Massachusetts, and I thought, well, let me find my next big project. Mm -hmm. And I'll never retire. I'll always look at some, you know, a new, uh, a new project. And uh, the cannabis industry looked like it was one that needed a lot of help because they can't raise the capital, they can't get the permitting, and their visions are sometimes skewed because they were in a, what I call, closed circuit secret society. They're all involved in their industry, but don't really share the space. You can't ask a cultivator what it costs for them to grow because they don't want to share the information, and therefore there's limited data points. So we've spent an enormous amount of resources this year just on data. We sent out 38,000 letters to landowners and landowners in mass. I've looked at 1,000 pieces of property. I've come up with 20 that work. This is one. So it's industrial zone. Um, the way the concept is, I don't know if you know the part where you do, because it's. I think awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the access way will be on Plain Street. We'll have a buffer. Plain area. Road. Plain Road. Plain Road, I call it. Okay. Plain Road. Um, so, you know, it's sheltered. You're not going to see it from the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have in a section of that, which is better, I think, on paper than here. We're also doing on-site solar so that we can mitigate the electrical and renewable resources. Greenhouses take much less power than oh. indoor facilities. You made a comment earlier. The amount of carbon footprint for indoor growing facilities is unbelievable. It's a travesty. And they don't think through the fact that the amount of power that's required. So we are actually mitigating the power requirements and actually doing on-site solar that can mitigate the, the power demand. So they're almost freestanding without using any local resources. So these are, this is a uh, about 20,000 square foot platform, of which 10,000 square feet is what they call canopy. And this is a smaller unit of about 13,000 square feet that is 5,000 square feet of canopy. So the two licensing criteria is the smallest ones of what these do. Mm -hmm. And they're for local cultivators. And we have local cultivators that want to lease these from us, ready to go. Right now. Yeah. You. So the piece of property starts on five and ten. That strip, and there's some white, like yeah. What is that? Right where your fingers are. Well, that's that's a, that's an option for a third one. I'm not going to ask for permitting for it now, but that is I'm putting it. That's a good location for a third one if we expand it. And so your company's going to buy this piece of property and develop it. That's right. Right. So that's a great way to leverage the capital. So we're basically doing it as a real estate investment process. So we can actually raise the capital based upon the assets. So we, we don't have to, we're not operators, we're not going to be licensees, we're not going to, but we're going to manage these facilities and be the primary point of contact and manage the facilities because we have, this is about a $5.6 million project. And you'll sell these to the people or no, lease them? Lease them. So, and the lease rates are, believe it or not, between about $45,000 to $80,000 per month. Triple net over seven years. So it's a, it, these are these are they're they're professional greenhouses. So your model isn't a variety of these. You'd lease it to one. How many leases? This would be one or two. One or two. Yeah. Right. And this isn't part of this other third spot, the thirteen thousand. What? Why is that? I mean, that, that, that that's a whole different permitting issue because it's got an egress onto five. Right, right. And that I put it down just because that could be a possible location. It doesn't have to be. And again, this is a preliminary. Just I'm introducing this mm -hmm, to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so get the conversation started. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 usually, you know, we meet with the you know the the, the engineer, town engineer. So in Douglas, we're working on a project in Douglas, dealing with the you know dealing with the hierarchy of all the people. Right now, we met with you for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I usually deal with, you know, people that you rely on as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we, you know, we work this through with all the stakeholders and work through the permitting process. Mm -hmm. So we have a project in North Attleboro, Douglas, Orange, Templeton, um, Wendell, we had a project. We're not going to do it because it was an indoor growth facility and it has too much power. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're cognizant of the carbon footprint argument that's uh, absolutely resonating in this industry. So then you're saying if the marijuana thing fizzles out, tomatoes. 
Well, it's funny you say tomatoes because I knew somebody in town, I'm going to say 20 years ago, tried raising tomatoes, wasn't economical. Yeah, you have to do them vertically and you have to make sure that I'm you... Just, I'm yeah, not no, a farmer. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. it sounds good, but... Yeah. Well, it is the new, I mean, the, the technology there has lots of flash and pop right now. It's moving forward. So it is changing, I think. Well, I know, and cost of transportation, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, there, I mean, there are different ingredients in the, in the, in the, uh, the model that you have to yeah. analyze. And again, the market demand is such that, you know, it's not the everyday tomato that you're going to be buying that, but it's an heirloom or it's a high value product that the Whole Foods sells it and they got a premium price for it. Well, if it can happen. Yeah. So, and frankly, yeah. once these buildings are paid for and amortized over the relatively yeah. short period of time, they're, it's, it, they're there. Make, made all the money in case. Exactly, right. With any luck. And, 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 you know, with some of your comment before, I think cannabis um, has, uh, I, 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 it, not gonna, I'm not saying unfortunately, right? Um, it's, you know, as long as it's not abused like anything else. So gambling's abused, alcohol's abused, tobacco's abused, right? As long as it's well regulated and it's uh, co co cohesively regulated, so you guys get direction from the state to know what you're doing, right? Because mm -hmm. you guys were hung out to dry a little bit by the state regulations, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Right, well, so. Yeah, yeah, it's water over the dam. So, point is, I think it's going to it's going to be a product that's going to be around for a while. But as long as it's highly regulated and you really have good controls over it, so it's reasonably done, I think you have good public support for that type of attitude. If it's freewheeling, then it's a totally different dynamic. I think that this, personally, I feel the state was cautious and thoughtful and moved. So they hogtied us in some ways, but they also didn't, they've got, we've got regulations behind us in terms of signage and things like that are from the state that we don't have to worry about. That is a good thing. Yes. You, this Colorado, if, you, if you're driving around, it is, it's Wild West. It's the you know, Silver Saloon, but with big cannabis leaves. I mean, we just were protected by that from that. And so some of the state regs have actually protected us. Absolutely. And there's an underlying uh, political fabric there where, you know, you made a comment about whether Alabama and Carolina is. That might happen with hemp, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the controls that Massachusetts wants to keep on this industry, and in hemp as well, mm -hmm. is going to protect our industry. So we don't have cross-border infiltration. We'll never allow product coming in from New York or coming in from Carolinas mm -hmm. to come into the state. Because, mm -hmm. frankly, the value proposition for the local market is just too, too important. Right. Are you saying I, that they can't import marijuana now? No, they can't because, well, it's federally, uh, it's a federally bar. It's still a class one. So you can't that's going to change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Got that's going to change. But it, it's not it's gonna, all, you don't think so? Well, it will. Yes. yes. It's all about economics. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to change. And that's right. And that's why Massachusetts, if it proves, will regulate it like alcohol and some of the other things, will, will mandate local control because it's too much money. Well, uh, the residents are going to complain. Why? Why am I paying, you know, a million dollars for whatever an ounce of marijuana when I can go down to Connecticut or Alabama and get it for two dollars? It's got, you know, it's not going to happen. Well, it won't happen fast though. No, I know. It's yeah. going to take time for it to evolve. Right. right. Yeah, we see. I see a horizon of about five to seven years mm -hmm. until the price. Be, right now, the price point is fairly stable and fairly high. And unfortunately, a lot of the uh, a lot of the people that are that are built, developing this industry are counting on that high value coming out for a long period of time, and I think that's full market. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to drop. Like you look at Washington State and some of the others. If you've done any research, it's already started. Make your money and run. Well, okay, so we're better regulated. We're not the Wild West like happening in Oregon and Washington. Mm -hmm. So then I think the price right. points are going to be stable, mm -hmm. but it's going to drop. And so I'll give you some sense. Their project are coming in at about $350 a square foot. Mm -hmm. I'm coming in at $1.165 a square foot. So our CapEx costs are realistic, so you can actually you can actually make these profitable at a low price. Mm -hmm. So we're actually modeling this out. So if the price drops to literally $1,000 a pound, right now it's nearly four, mm -hmm. we still have, they're still profitable. Is that a steel building with the uh Actual fiberglass skins, you said? Uh, no, it's actually f interesting. Composited steel, uh, composited fiberglass arch support. So in there, there's a um, 
a quick render of the of, basically it, it's an art a company called Art Solar, and it's a Chinese manufacturer. And they, Why don't they make them in America. Well, they, they designed them in America. It's, you know, I think eventually, you know, we're gonna have to make them here. But it's a uh, it's a relatively <laughs> straightforward design. So it has a but but the um, the wind loading and weight loading is exceptional on it because of the arch structure and the composite material, right? And uh, those are the two sizes, yeah, tier one and tier two. And the uh, so the fabrication is straightforward, the construction is solid, and the deployment, the, main, the actual uh, uh, construction of it on ground, really simple. On a slab, straight up, a couple weeks to install. Good, good, good facility. So right for hardware. a concrete slab? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it has to be with FDA. So the FDA is going to be involved within two or three years. So we're designing all our facilities with that in mind. So down the road. You know, it's going to be federal, there are going to be some federal compliant requirements that we actually anticipate how we actually integrate them into the slide so design, etc. They're actually considered like a building then with the concrete foundation? Um, well, the greenhouses, you would want a concrete foundation only because of the easier for maintenance. I mean, you could. Well, like, I can understand yeah. the advantages, yeah. but, well, you know, because, like, greenhouses, I don't, they don't consider them buildings, I don't think. Uh, they Not don't. Here. They don't. So our MEP actually incorporates uh, uh, sprinklers. It actually incorporates elements of building design. So they are anticipating they are building. So you'd have to pull a building permit. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. You you're, you're would be looking for a building permit. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is interesting. Uh, there's a lot going on in this industry. In this yeah. Case. Yeah. That's it. It's an interesting property. Well, it's, it makes it affordable and it makes it profitable. Uh, we have two groups that are interested in doing this. And actually, you know, one is a uh, young couple out in New Jersey that's moving to Massachusetts, and another group that's in uh, Springfield. So, you know, great. Uh, basically, family family growers that want to do this. So maybe two or three employees per, per building, so it's not a lot of traffic. It's a nice use for that land. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, any comments before I go okay. back? Oh, I've heard your bowl book before, so I Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks, Bye. you as well. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I did all that to write out the continuance, and I didn't get to sign it. Oh, they don't have to sign that one. Yeah, well, he does because he, he's bringing it forward to us. We didn't have to oh, sign okay. that yeah, one, but we do. Uh, I'll, I'll email him. He'll be fine. Chris? Yeah. No, uh, that one we didn't because that's us. But, yeah. yeah. No, uh, Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Dick Evans had to sign, would have had to sign that because oh, he right, brought right, that forward. Right. And I had it all written out because I was trying to. Well, what do you got for us? Nothing. You're just sitting here. A spectator. Do we have to vote on minutes or stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, we should vote on minutes. Do you have those in front of you? I read them I did too. online. I don't know if they changed. She I'm sent them to you? She did. Did I you get, didn't them? get them? I must have been. <clears throat> I read them this afternoon. <laughs> this is the thing. She says, uh, we need a representative to the Regional Planning Board from the Planning Board Municipality. John Veronis and Ann Mary were interested, but Ann Mary said no. I thought, I thought she said. She said no way. I know, but then she changed her mind and said that. She'd just go when she could. Yeah. Yes. That's what it was. You're right. Okay. And John used to like it, so that's what he, she was kind of pointing out. <laughs> I wanted to ask the guy, I guess Dan from the solar thing, if he talked Scott. to ever said, Scott. Freeman. Yeah, if, if oh, they pushed that stuff back further than. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but shoot. We I wanted him. to ask him at night. Oh, before shoot. Before he left the thing. I forgot. I don't know. We could have yeah. asked that. You know what? I'll ask him in an email, Roger, and I'll, I'll copy him. You're not going to see that anyway. It's just on the other side of that one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Kip, it's I right but he should, uh, we, he, in good faith, he said he would ask. Yeah. He would, yeah. he would he pursue would. it, and I think that would have been good to ask. I'm so sorry. Well, That's a good call. Uh, another solar field someplace. I don't even know where, where it was. But they did, like, have, like, three poles, and they had their, like, whatever, their panels or meters on them. And then it just went poof, right down in the ground and went out to the solar field. But yep. I don't know why they have those three big poles. I mean, like, they're telephone poles mm. and they're high. Mm. So I don't understand why if they that's need what to do that. that. But that's not going to be in the field. That's going to be in the edge of the road. Yeah, I don't think I, I know that. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. Why do they even need to do that? Why can't they have them, like, on a pedestal, you know, so, or if they need to be off the right. ground, you know, why have a, a pole, you know, just go up and down, you know? Mm. Well, the poles are for the wires. It goes underground from the meter. I mean, from their meter things over to the pole, then it goes up, then it goes down the road. These are right out in the field kit. Like, you know, they're not like part of the. Uh, are you sure that's what you think? Because yeah. the discussion we had was about the uh, actual, um, not the meter box, what they call it, the, the transformer type thing, and the meter thing. And that whole thing was only about 36 inches high. Yeah, well, the transformers, that's a whole, but that's, it's like they're. Their meters, like by the road, yeah. to measure, and I don't know why they need them on a big pole. You know, why couldn't you just go up underground? And I think that's what we got them to do. Uh, They're not having big yeah, poles. Yeah, exactly. But that's the typical installation. That's what I'm trying that's to say. That's why it's, right. we're, yeah. we're saying that they're doing that. Yeah. All right. So, um, I'm, I'm. Anybody want to move to accept the minutes? As, oh. as I move presented? to accept the minutes of January sixth, two thousand twenty. A second? I'll second it. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed and abstain. So that's three, uh, zero, one. One abstention max, right? No. Well, I watched the video. Oh, good. So, so four, zero, zero. Okay. Perfect. So, did you see the? Well, all this discussion. So, this is the discussion that we had about marijuana last time. Max. And so, that that um, this is the kind of concerns that we had about um, a map, and that's what Chris has for us. I think that's what he's prepared for us is a map so that we can look and see with this use table what is available. Like, are we? Creating use table that that has potential for zero growth. Actually, the use table would include this one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So that's the kind of thing that we're just trying to sure. figure out. Look at it and say, and then separate the use, um, separating these uses out so that it isn't all in one spot. You know, in that, if you think about, it, that's kind of a. I'm going to use the word clever way of doing it because this, if, what this guy's proposing is he, he can come before the board mm -hmm. and say, I want to put up these fabricated Buildings. greenhouses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I am going to try to, you know, rent them to a marijuana company. Right. But if I don't get a successful tenant, I'm going to rent it to a tomato Somebody company. Else. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know? that's the... So that, there's kind of a catch yeah. there because, you know, um, but although if, if, say, we do approve his site plan, knowing that we don't really know who the ultimate tenant is, then he comes back and they want to uh, put marijuana in there. Th those marijuana folks are still going to have to come before the board for all their stuff okay. anyways. It's just the site plan portion of it would be taken care of. I think what he's going to do, obviously, he's going to try to propose to this and get the okay, but then he's going to try to sell this to somebody that wants to raise marijuana and stuff. He's yeah. not going to put them up and say, here, oh. I got this place all set, because obviously he's going to put up the money. But though. It, I'm not sure. I think in our bylaws, though, that can't they necessarily can't. happen, right. because whoever comes before us has to be the ultimate one. The licensee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If that's the case, yeah. he would have to. Yes. Yeah. So he'd have to have it sold before he even came to right. us. And he'd have to apply right. for a, uh, right. okay. a community host yeah, agreement. Know that. Nine mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. There's our expert. Yeah. He probably is. Probably knows a lot more than mm -hmm. we do. How are you guys doing? I just really? I was going to say, when is anybody going to get a license to start growing this stuff? 
Or on the record, remember, still. Yeah. And what I didn't say, and only because I was trying to be polite and listen, is that, <laughs> you know, that farm down the road sold for $3.2 million, and it's still only assessed at $450,000. <laughs> well, have they even put any... I see what uh, you're saying, the property tip, not like so well, much... Well, there's buildings there, but the, the, yeah, the well. use has changed, and, the, and, we, and it all went... The, the, the <laughs> tax should have changed. So mine should have went down then, right? What? Exactly. Do um, you have any questions for us? So the concern that I have as a resident is the, probably the same concern that you raised earlier with the cultivation. We, we put up a greenhouse, we sell them for $10 million, and then we put up greenhouses over here. That's kind of the same situation that's going on here is the concrete pad and that that's how it's done now. Yep. And to me that's a building. It is. Oh, so it is. Gonna well he's gonna get a building permit. That's what he's saying. I understand so. that. But now you know, you have all of that in the RA district. Now it's full of no, it's full of buildings. That's right. what we are It's not to. there's no out there's no outdoor growing right. in no. this business. So no. No. I don't want to see the entire RA district littered with greenhouses. No. And no. I that's not actually a lot of people, you're being yeah. honest. Yes. And I think that's what we're responding to. That's yes, I, I, but they don't come here. I hear on the street. I know. interview people. Yep. Well, yeah. everybody thought that Pioneer Gardens that those were the pop. Those that was the marijuana. Like, oh look, there's the marijuana. The like, my sister-in-law yeah. is driving by all the time. She thought those were marijuana. That, she thought right that was it. Ten. She thought that was it for for four months. Hmm. I was like, no, I think that's a lot of concern with other people, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, um. Yeah, I, can I just run through what I need to do? So yes, go ahead. All right, because I think we're, we've made it through the agenda. I haven't looked at mail, but I don't know. Um, I need to check with Bill Berman about the, the fee. It, the fee for the A&R, because I, I don't see it registered. I'm sure it's fine. I need to check with Bob Walden to find out that he has no comment. Would you like me to speak to Bob and take that off your plate? Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay. Okay. About so the, North that, yes, about yes, the North I Street thing. Yes, about the North Street thing because I think that would be very important. Also, tell him he asked me about those houses uh, at um, 198 Pioneer, you know, at mm -hmm. Sense Mass. Those are for how for retail. Uh, they're, I thought they were going to take one down. They're keeping them both for, for office offices, space. Yes. I, and I told I him wrong. Because so could you correct me on that? Correct. Tell him. Bob. Bob. Correct, Bob. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. Correct. I told him the wrong thing. Okay. Um, I need to do the Scott Reamer letter, follow up with that, get Sue to write a letter, talk to whoever about making sure that that's all legit and that that's he gets for that. The, uh, for the um, old frontier solar field. The solar field. field. For, okay. for the decommissioning. And I will put in that, because I'm going to send him an email, so I'll put in that. I'll ask yeah, him I just what the status of. Yeah. Of moving the, the you know response to the yeah. to the homeowner's request that he said that he would honor, and then I've got to get um, Dick Evans and Dubendorf to I'll write them an email of you just saying we'd like their approval, and sure. then I think that email will serve sure. instead, you know, in place of getting them to sign that continuance. The reason I think that we need to continue is because. We need this working meeting so that we can put forward, put our thoughts well, you know, into it. But, well, but also put our... Uh, help me out here, because when, when Max, you know, was opposed to continuing it, yeah. what I'm thinking is like, okay, we have this whole public thing, as I said, you know, well, as we continue on, but, and then afterwards you said, well, they brought it forward, so we need the continuance. But I think even though we might have brought it, in the beginning, we still have to have this public hearing Absolutely. to talk about the bylaws anyway. Yeah. So I don't really necessarily know that they need to authorize that you know, continuance. Yeah, they do, because he brought it forth. Right. And it's his, so he has, I, I got, it's okay. not, a, he just has to say yes, he mm -hmm. will. But what I'm saying is that, and I think that we need to get the word out a little bit more so people do come and see it. it we need, I know. Oh, well, I'm try. just saying, I know, but I think I might try a little harder too on this one to say there will be two in front of us. You want to kind of see, just seeing what the differences are will help people understand what some of these issues are. Because I think sometimes, you know, you see a shade of gray and you go, oh, that's a nice shade of gray. But then you see it next to another shade of gray and you're like, oh, that's really dark. You know, and I think that's what people need to see. I think that do when they- Do you have a draft available? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, from, only I seem to have it. That's line. the thing. Okay. But I will. I will get you a copy if All you'd right, like. Because Dick has a copy, actually. Okay. 
um, because you know it's different from his, and the use table oh, he needs I'm to sure know. It is. Uh, it, but it, it, there are things that are the same too. He's not, as he said, you know, for one, but, we're putting medical marijuana and we're putting those things together. Ours has a lot more um, d definitions. It's a little clearer, I think. Yes, it's longer, is, but it's clearer. But, but his, the, probably the big difference is where it can take place. It's the use table. Yeah. Well, not only that, but what can happen there too. Right. And he's really pushing that we allow that um, co-location, the manufacturing, if you will, in the RA district. Well, well co-location so that yeah. it stays in the RA yeah. and right. they can do the other yeah. thing. Right. We're saying we're going to take it out of the RA yeah. and you can't do that. <laughs> right. I mean, maybe right. the co-location in, in the industrial area. Well, I, I'm I not sure. I didn't know. If, I thought we were going to, in certain areas, you could grow and distribute, but there was one part of the town I thought maybe it would be we just a grow. It, just right, just grow and right. some places just right. manufacture. Right. So no, I, I think that's And that's right. looking at our town too. And that's where right. Chris had the, the he has the um, maps for us to look at that what, was a, what what it would mean. I should sure think that was a fatal mistake what we did in the beginning. We we should have if we wanted to expand from the very limited industrial area we had, we should have expanded it down route five and ten a I know, or two or whatever, and kept it in. Just think back how it oh, all I happened. Oh, I, was know. Like, yeah. I know. We're so much cleverer we're, now than we were then. They led with medical marijuana, though. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we were addressing yes. at that time. Yes. It's just all the right. poor well, old the legalization part that came apart? After, after that, that recreation thing and trying to help out the farmers and stuff, that, that's where it all blew up. Right. Is there anything else? The other thing, I'm going to say this right now. Paul, if you're listening, come in and sign your... Campaign finance report municipal form. <laughs> He's the last one. I signed it. Max is all set. I'm good. You're I good. It. I know. You, uh, he, Paul's the only one. Mm -hmm. So, and then anything else? No, I make a motion to adjourn. Yes, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye.